Well, did the weekend weather models verify with rainfall across the Corn Belt? That is the big question on many minds here as we kick off the week. Let's talk about it. Let's take a look at weather. Eric Snodgrass of Nutrien joins us here today. Eric, always good to catch up with you. And uh, I know looking at how the weather shaped up over the weekend, there's some chatter from folks that are, are a little unhappy with some of the rainfall totals, but it looks like most areas that were forecast to get rain did, in fact, get something. Can you talk about what we saw over the weekend? Yeah, I think the biggest disappointment was kind of the northern half of Illinois, much of Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, the system came through and dumped a lot of rain south of those locations. Um, was it well forecast? No, it wasn't well forecast. But you got to remember, summer is our time of year that we have the poorest forecasting. So you look back over the last seven days and you look at a map like this and boy, it looks like there's a lot of rain in there, but you peel off everything less than a half inch. There's some big holes that were, that are still left to be filled. Now, good news is the low that came through and hit Missouri, hit Southern Illinois, hit Indiana, Ohio, parts of Michigan, hit Kentucky, uh, produces severe weather over the Southeast, produced the, you know, baseball, not baseball, softball size hail in Dallas. Okay. That storm system is still spinning over Michigan today, and there's going to be some chances for rain to come back in on the back side of this to hit Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of folks that uh, would have looked at the forecast from last week and kind of thrown up their arms and said, hey, man, this looked way better in the models than and here we are looking at it, and it's not so great. So we just think about where it's going to head this week, and we're kind of back into a bit of a drier week unless you're in the front range of the Rockies or if you're over the big wildfire areas in British Columbia and Alberta, or if you're in New England, or if you are down in the Mid-South heading down to the Southeast. Those are the wet areas. But a lot of us in the Midwest, the Corn Belt, we're waiting on another system late this week to come back through. Now, here's the difference. The 30 days up to this, we had no systems. Mm -hmm. So there is at least a shift going on that's going to bring the moisture more toward us. But my biggest problem is, is we've got like six or seven things competing for space across the United States. You could toss El Nino in there. You could toss the dramatic ocean temperature patterns. The biggest thing that's just gone is the Bermuda High. You've got to get that sucker to come back. So as you look here and say, well, what's this pattern doing toward the solstice? That big black arrow says we're going to be dipping a trough into the west with a ridge building into Texas. So Texas already this week is going to see high temperatures that are going to be going up there into that uh, range of 100 to 110 degrees. And the thought right now is that we're going to get ridge running storms over the top of this, which hit a big section of the Corn Belt. My biggest worry is the Great Lakes and surrounding areas as being driest in that's going to continue to be a worry as we go forward. If the Bermuda high would just come home, I'll be honest with you, mm -hmm. if just come back to Bermuda, you and I would be talking and people would be smiling as they're listening. And we would just be talking about, you know, things really pushing in the right direction. So that's it, man. That was, that was my weekend. I have not <laughs> slept well because of this. It's frustrating. You know, you sit there and you watch and you watch and you watch and you think you have the idea. But as Mother Nature so frequently does, she says, you know, I got my own plans and you didn't do a good job of seeing what they were. <laughs> exactly. And she doesn't like to talk and she, you know, she likes you to predict what, 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 what the pattern is going to be. And I think it's a kick out of when you get it wrong. So she there you are. You to, yeah. She likes you to predict. And then most of the time she does something different than what we predict. Uh, that's for yeah. sure. Well, you talk about the Ridge riding storms and, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm looking and thinking about this weather pattern. And to me, when I hear Ridge riders, you know, that means kind of unpredictable, but good chances for rain. Does that feel like that could be, maybe a bit of a, a saving grace through the, the middle section of the Corn Belt because I'll, I'll throw up the drought monitor here from last week on our video feed too. And I mean, there's some pretty dry pockets and this is continuing to expand all the way from eastern Nebraska into the eastern Corn Belt here, Eric. It is, it, it is and it has to be. You said it's the saving grace. It, it has to be. Otherwise, we'll be talking about, you know, pollination time period and, and we'll be will be wanting for, for moisture like we've not seen in a long time. I do get asked, well, this is just like 2012. And the reality of it is it's not. The, the, could be as You could be feeling as dry as it was in 2012, but the mechanisms that are getting us here um, aren't that way. In fact, I joked with a group last week. I said, you know, my grandma used to say there's more than one way to skin a cat. 
I don't know where that phrase comes from, but I'll tell you, there's more than one way to develop droughts. And if we do not see the effect of the ridge riding storms, the better deeper troughs over the Southwest, you know, the things that are, that are eventually gonna toss this flow across the midsection of the country, which it is gonna happen. But if, if that doesn't start to really cure these problems, then, you know, we're, we're, we're in trouble. Good news is right now we're buying some time because it's cool as well. In fact, I went out and looked at the corn this morning I'm in an area that's been very dry in East Central Illinois, but the corn looks much better than it did a week ago. And we did get a little rain here over the weekend, but we'll be back toward 90 by Thursday. And uh, that's just got a lot of folks worrying, is this gonna be the pattern that's on repeat? Do I keep getting missed by the storms? And it feels like there's a lot of people getting missed this year that haven't been missed in a long time. And the places are getting soaked are the places that were missed for the previous 18 months. I mean, the flooding from Texas to Colorado up to Montana has just been unprecedented uh, in the last few years in that area. Well, and just uh, looking at this drought monitor, too, we've seen a little bit of improvement in some of those areas here, Texas, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Colorado. I mean, virtually no drought showing up across the state, then up into Montana, parts in North Dakota. In fact, most of North Dakota is uh, out of the drought monitor. So to, to that point, some of these areas have benefited, but then we're, we're seeing those pockets increase here during a, a key time, as you said. And I know a lot of farmers are, are frustrated and that's just going to have to be part of it is we have to, we're at the mercy of mother nature here. Eric. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. And I wonder if we're going to go into another week where we trade model runs because the 12 Z run always comes out in the middle of the market day comes mm -hmm. out almost right at the very end of it actually sometimes you really see big price reactions to a new model run and, and what's interesting is the reactions tend to happen at everything beyond day 10 which is when we have the lowest confidence <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know you, if all of a sudden the map shows up green uh, the model could you know the, they could trade the weather in one direction if it shows up brown then it goes the other direction and the reality of it is is that it's trading on for the most part, bogus data. We, we don't have good, they trade the individual model runs, not the ensemble. And that's, that's a, you know, that's just a thing that, that it does. So yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm not enjoying the additional stress uh, from this, uh, <laughs> this growing season, but no, no one else is either. I, I feel as though I have a thousand acres out there that I'm worried about. Eric, I want to ask you too about the Canadian prairies. I know we've seen just very dry up there. Obviously, the Canadian wildfires uh, across Canada have been an issue with all that smoke coming down into the U.S. Any good chances? Uh, you mentioned British Columbia here earlier. Any good chances for some rainfall to not only help out with the wildfires, but provide some moisture through the uh, Canadian prairies and help out some of that wheat and canola crop? Actually, yes. Um, I think if a Canadian watched my weather forecast this morning, they would be really happy because we do see this West Coast trough developing. So that's what typically happens if you're going to put a big ridge over Texas, you go west of there, you're going to have a trough. So uh, that just tends to eject a bunch of moisture into that area. The right lift is there in bigger storms. So I'm actually watching for the end of this week for the British Columbia and Alberta wildfires to be quenched by some rain late this week. Um, the smoke that was still from last week's terrible air quality issues over the east, that's finally moving out into the Atlantic. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's going to be better better chances of storms there. But it, a lot of those folks throughout the Canadian Prairie, because remember those wildfires are in the boreal forest, they're north, right? Mm -hmm. But throughout the Canadian Prairie, there's been a lot of discussion about, hey, just like we've been doing, man, the storms hit there, but missed me here. And so there are pockets up there as well that desperately need more moisture. Well, Eric, as well, I should ask South America real quick, any changes to the weather pattern down there? Sounded like maybe some rains in Brazil over uh, over the weekend. Yeah, and more coming early this week in southern Brazil. So if you got some late planted safrina that just needs that last drink, this is going to push it forward. But it's very cold. We have a lot of cold air through Argentina into Paraguay, Uruguay, southern Brazil. I did not observe a frost over the weekend in southern Brazil. This would be the time of year where the frost would be problematic, but there's gonna be some cold air really advancing into that area. Um, I'm not, I cannot for certain say that there's gonna be a frost event out of this though uh, in, in, in southern Brazil that could ding the top of the, the yield for the corn crop. Well, Eric, great thoughts. Any uh, final thoughts you want to share with us here today? I know as well we should mention that uh, your weather newsletter, the email newsletter, is now a, a weekly update every Monday, Eric. Yeah, you know, we all hate email. <laughs> and I was clogging people's inboxes every day. 
so what I'm doing now is I, I, we're still doing the morning minute videos. We're still doing the in-depth videos that go to our YouTube channel. You can find that. Go to Nutrinag Solutions. Just search for that on YouTube and you'll get those. At 6.30 a.m. every day, I've got a new update. Okay. Then on Monday, Thursday, in-depth reports in the evening. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is give you a, a, a comprehensive Monday report that you can reference throughout the rest of the week that's got my latest thoughts. And I'll stop kind of pinging you every single morning with a, with a, with an email. Um, I think that's when we had the most engagement. Uh, but you know, big topic in today was what is controlling the pattern? Because mm -hmm. El Nino is raging. We're already a degree C above average, yet we're not getting El Nino-like behavior. And so we kind of diagnose all those things so you know what I'm watching. But by the way, CPC just said 90% chance of keeping El Nino around all the way to January, February, March of this upcoming year. Uh, and uh, at some point, it has to take a grip on everything. And if it does, the sooner it does, the better for all these Midwestern farmers that have been getting missed. So I am, I'm not sleeping much, Jesse. There's just a lot of like, okay, when's the next run coming out? What's going on in the forecast? Yeah. Can I make this more accurate and more skillful? And that's where we are. This is a, this is a weather year by a big stretch. Well, we hope that you find some sleep here this week, and we appreciate the time and knowledge as always. Eric Snodgrass with Nutrien, thanks for joining us, and uh, have a great week, my friend. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Sounds good. See you, Jesse.